On a recent trip to Orlando, Jack planned a day showing me some places we had never been. And since it was a fall trip with Halloween in the air, you might notice a spooky theme to some of the stops in today's video. But whatever season you visit, here are three non-theme park attractions open year-round that we think you should check out. In a world where neighbors send their children to your door begging for your chocolate, where black cats bolt across your path, where world powers seem content to sentence us to a dark dystopian future, the biggest terrors are lurking unexpectedly right around the next corner. This sounds a bit like an election campaign ad. In today's trilogy of terror, prepare for the worst, because the universe will never cease to disappoint even your lowest of expectations. Our first story today takes place in a kingdom made entirely of chocolate, where we learn the age-old Halloween lesson that too much of a good thing can be very bad. Huh. Well, actually, Chocolate Kingdom is advertised as a factory adventure tour. It's a fun 45-minute walking tour that teaches guests all about the history of chocolate, and there are plenty of samples along the way. The experience starts in this theater room where a short introductory video is shown featuring a cartoon prince who has made a pair of chocolate shoes that unfortunately get destroyed when his sidekick, a dragon, accidentally breathes fire and melts the chocolate shoes, leaving the prince without a gift to impress the princess. The tour group then goes on a journey to learn about how chocolate transforms from the cacao plant to the tasty treats we all know today. We can't film through much of this tour, but we were allowed to take pictures. In the first room, the tour guide gave us a lot of good information about how and when the fruit of the cacao trees were first harvested. We were shown what a cacao pod looked like, and we were given a sample of the seeds that are inside the pod to taste. They're actually pretty bitter, but these were rolled around in sugar to help cut down on the bitterness. We learned the history of how people long ago in South America crushed the seeds and used it to make a beverage. We were also given a sample of that beverage, and it was pretty thick, but it tasted vaguely chocolatey. Europeans who landed in South America took this beverage back to Europe and it became a drink that was enjoyed by royalty for years before it became readily available to the masses. The next room was a miniature look at the Chocolate Kingdom itself, with a literal river of chocolate and a showing of how chocolate can be molded to form a castle. They even had chocolate figures of the prince and his sidekick dragon, and since this kingdom is in Florida, they also had a chocolate alligator. Then everyone was handed some marshmallows and given a chance to step up to a catapult and launch the marshmallows into the mouth of the dragon. The tour turned to madness as the villagers attempted to pelt the fire-breathing beast who had a history of destroying women's footwear with their marshmallows. But this indignity only further enraged the dragon. Nah, he was pretty chill about it, actually. And we were all given a chocolate marshmallow snack to try. Then it was through another door to a working chocolate factory. The tour guide showed us a number of pieces of machinery used in the modern creation of chocolate treats, and he demonstrated how they worked. He talked about the process as well as the difference in recipes between milk, dark, and white chocolate, which was really interesting. There were a couple employees making some of the items sold in the chocolate gift shop. And as we watched them work, we were all given some tiny milk, dark, and white chocolate samples to try that were in the shape of shoes. The tour lasts about 45 minutes and tickets are $18.95 for adults and $14.95 for kids 12 and under. For an additional $10, you can get a customized chocolate bar that they make right in front of you. 
There are a bunch of ingredients that you can add to this bar. Jack got milk chocolate with peanuts and peanut butter chips. I went with dark chocolate with bacon, coffee, and peanut butter chips. The process of completing your customized bar does take an extra 10 to 15 minutes, so we spent that time shopping in the gift shop. Your chocolate is then sent through the air on this conveyor once it solidifies and it's handed off to you. We also bought some chocolate wine, which we actually have not tried yet. If fire-breathing dragons and overconsumption of sugary sweets aren't enough to scare you, prepare yourselves for a darker turn as we go in search of a black cat. We will purposefully cross its path to see if it really is a source of bad luck. Will we disprove a superstition or invite evil into our lives? What in the world? Our story starts at an unassuming cafe in the greater Orlando area called Minch Coffee. We order up some coffee and desserts, surrounded by patrons, completely unaware of the grave threat lurking just on the other side of the wall. Rather than sitting with the normies, we cross through a side portal and enter the Orlando Cat Cafe. For a small fee, we can consume our treats in the presence of creatures who go about their lives with complete indifference to our presence. But somewhere, mixed in among this herd, is the elusive Halloween icon, the Black Cat. So, we had been on vacation for a week at this point, and we were missing our cats back home. So it was really cool to check this place out. Cat cafes first began in Taiwan and soon became very popular in Japan. They've been growing in popularity in the U.S. in recent years. This is the first one that we've ever been to, though. The coffee and treats from Minch Coffee were delicious. I ordered a pumpkin pie latte with a chocolate panini. Jack ordered his all-time favorite dessert, peanut butter pie. Both of these were really good, but our main enjoyment from the hour or so that we spent here was visiting with the cats. We had so much fun playing with them and petting them. The cats here are all up for adoption, so if you live in the area and you want to adopt a cat, you can visit the cafe to play with some cats and pick one out. There's a $10 entry fee to visit the cats, which goes to pay for their care as they await adoption. And then suddenly, we laid eyes on a black cat known to be a witch's familiar. No, she wasn't involved in witchcraft at all. She was a precious little black kitten named Rainbow, and she was adorable. She was a master of disguise who put her spell on Alice. She did not put a spell on me. One of our cats is black, and when we adopted her from the shelter, we were actually given warnings to keep an eye on her around Halloween and make sure that she didn't get out, as there has historically been instances of animal cruelty involving black cats around Halloween. So don't believe crazy things about animals. We really enjoyed our time at the Cat Cafe. Our trilogy concludes at a local, seemingly inconspicuous comic book shop called Gods and Monsters. It advertises itself as Orlando's nerd hub. It has what every Star Wars nerd and Marvel nerd and horror nerd And yes, even Disney Nerd is looking for to complete their fandom collection. But beyond the merch, you will find a post-apocalyptic speakeasy called Vault 5421 that prepares you for the future dystopia wasteland. Housed in a fallout shelter, the bar serves cocktails inspired 
by the coming nuclear holocaust, as well as a variety of over 130 beers. We ordered a couple of drinks here. I got Monster Island, which features coconut and dark rums, passion fruit, orange, and guava syrup, pineapple juice, and grenadine for $8. Jack ordered the Nuka Cola Quantum, featuring light rum, blue curacao, elderflower, and Sprite for $7.50. We really liked our drinks. The theming here is also really cool. They have video games and some card game tables set up with people playing around the bar. It was a perfect vibe for Halloween. But like everything else on today's list, this post-apocalyptic speakeasy is open year-round. Unlike everything else on our list, this venue is for adults only. Of course, the first two attractions were family friendly, but this one is a bar. And you can't take your kids to a bar. I mean, this isn't Disney World after all. From the neighborhood surrounding the happiest place on earth, today's adventure proves that beyond the thin veneer of theme park sweetness, it's a small world of pain as we head into a great, big, terrible tomorrow. Yeah, I'm not sure that's what it proved at all. But anyway, check out these Orlando attractions the next time you are in the area. And click on the links at the end of this video to see Jack's review of Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Orlando. Or you can check out our tour of the not-so-scary Edgar Allan Poe Museum located in Richmond, Virginia. I'm Alice. And I'm Jack. <coughs> and I'm Jack. Be sure to click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so we can see you the next time we're traveling through the darkness. <sighs>